Do you find yourself stuck at your nine to five job, daydreaming about starting a business of your own? If you are ready to learn how to pivot from employee to entrepreneur, you are in the right place, my friend. Welcome to How to Quit Your Job and Start a Business, a limited edition podcast series designed just for you. I'm your host, Shannon Russell, career transition coach, entrepreneur, and your business bestie, guiding you on your journey from the corporate world to being the CEO of your own life. Each episode in this series will walk you through how to make this career transition in a way that doesn't disrupt your life and cause chaos at home. I'll walk you through the tested strategies I use with my clients so that you can move from where you are to where you want to be. Head over to secondactsuccess.co forward slash listen to grab my Starting a Successful Business Workbook. It's a perfect tool to guide you through this limited series podcast. Hit subscribe, pop in your earbuds, and let's hang out. Ready? Let's get to it. Hey there, welcome back to How to Quit Your Job and Start a Business, a limited series podcast just for you. I'm your host and career transition coach, Shannon Russell, and this podcast series is laid out for you. All episodes have been released and ready for you to binge right now. In this particular episode, we are going to talk about how you can assess your readiness to actually make that leap from employee to entrepreneur. We will chat about that pivot from your nine to five job to becoming your own boss and the questions you should ask yourself to know if you are truly ready. We'll also touch a little upon whether you should start out as a side hustle and then work forward to full time or if you should truly make that leap into full time right now. Making that leap from the nine to five to starting your own business is a significant decision. It requires careful consideration and a self assessment. And I'm not talking about a test that you can take, I'm talking about you spending some time with yourself, truly trying to answer those questions of if you are ready. By taking the time now to turn inward and really assess yourself, you will be able to ensure that you are ready for the challenges and the opportunities that lie ahead of you. We are going to walk through some key areas to evaluate your readiness and help you decide the best approach for you to move forward. The number one thing to think about is your financial readiness. Financial stability is a crucial factor when you consider, okay, I'm going to leave my corporate job. I'm going to leave this safety and the security to venture into something that is not that secure and not that safe. When you're building a business, you're not sure when you will be able to pay yourself. You are not sure how much money to put into the business. You're also not sure how your customers or your clients will react. We do the work ahead of time to do our market research, to talk to potential customers and clients and do all of that researching and work but you don't know truly who is going to purchase your product or service until your business is launched. Therefore, looking at your finances now will help you become a little bit more secure and clear on what you should do and how you should move forward. You will need to assess your current financial situation first so that you can determine if you're prepared to handle this change. There will be those potential ups and downs, but first, do you have enough money to leave your current job? That is the number one question my clients ask themselves, they ask me, and I put it back on them. It's all a matter of looking at your finances. I know, no one wants to actually open their bank accounts and do that math and really start diving in. It's uncomfortable, but it is so needed. So right now, I want you to pause this podcast, look at your accounts, and start looking at where you sit now when it comes to your finances. If you were to make this pivot in three months, six months, one year, how would you be able to save up now so that you can make that transition into entrepreneurship down the road? Or do you have enough money in savings that you would be able to quit your job tomorrow and start that business the next day? It's so crucial, guys, to be honest with yourself when you are assessing your finances. We all know we should have a safety net. We should have that three to eight months of savings ready to go for a rainy day. But do you have it? Look and see if you have savings 
that if you lost your job tomorrow, you would be okay for a few months. If you do, that is great, right? You're in the clear in that area. Now, how will you finance this business opportunity? Do you need X amount of savings to actually launch this business? That's where you have to, again, start looking at how much your business startup costs would cost you. So you're not only looking at the amount of money you need to live on while you make this transition, you also want to know that you have the money to actually build the business. Remember, you put money into the business before you get money back. That is just how it goes. You have to spend money to make money. So do that assessing. Really ask yourself these three crucial questions. Number one, do I have enough savings to cover my personal expenses for at least six to 12 months? If I don't have it now, how long would it take me to get that savings? Number two, have I created a budget for what my business startup costs will be? That is crucial. You want to know if you have the money to start this business. If you're starting an online business, if you're starting a services or a consulting business, those startup expenses will be a lot less. If you're opening a brick and mortar or a storefront type of business, you're going to need most likely a significant bank loan. You're going to need to find those funds or get investors to help you with those startup costs. So look at that and kind of figure out how much you will need to get your business started. Number three, do I have a plan for health insurance and other benefits that my current job provides that I may not have as a solopreneur? Again, I want you to be honest with yourself when you ask yourself these questions, as uncomfortable as it might be. It really is essential for you to have that financial cushion because that will give you more confidence and clarity to know that you can be excited and relieved and not super stressed as you start moving forward because you'll have an idea of what your expenses will be and how you can use any money in your savings to help cover those expenses while you build this dream business. The next part of this self-assessment I want you to really think about is assessing your skills and your experience. This is where you can take a close look at everything you've done in your career leading up to this point. Write down every skill you have, all of your experience, and not just taking your resume. I want you to really write down the things that you've accomplished in your career. What are you good at? Are you good at accounting and budgeting and numbers? Or are you really good at customer service and dealing with clients and partners? Write down everything that you've done. Write down awards, accolades, Anything that you've done in your career, write down even the stuff that you do not like, that you don't want to do again. Just write it down. I want you to look at that list and compare it to what you will be doing in your business. A lot of times there are what I call threads that really connect you from your past experience to what you want to be doing in the future. So it's really important to look and see, okay, I can use that skill in my business. Or it may show you that you have this gap in knowledge and experience that you might have to outsource or hire an employee to help you with maybe human resources or budgeting or website design or social media. Whatever it is that you don't have the experience or the skill set for, you can hire. But by assessing this list, you will get an idea of what you can take on and what you might have to outsource. I have three questions I want you to ask yourself when it comes to skills and experience. Number one, do I have experience in this industry that I'm about to enter in? Number two, are you familiar with the basic business operations of the business you want to launch? Maybe it's marketing, finances, management, customer service. Are you familiar with these basic business operations? And number three, are you willing to learn and adapt to new challenges? Are you willing to take on these new skills and have new experiences? Starting a business is just another adventure in life. You will be excited to keep learning and growing and challenging yourself. And many successful entrepreneurs have started businesses and thought, I have no idea what I'm doing. But you learn and you grow and you realize, wow. I actually have a lot of transferable skills 
that I was able to pull over from my past career experience and implement in my business. It wasn't as hard as I thought. Have fun doing this self-assessment. It really will give you that clarity and that confidence to move forward. The next avenue I want you to kind of assess here is your support system. Having a strong support system is really vital for entrepreneurs. It's not absolutely necessary, but it is something that can help you navigate the ups and downs, whether it's just emotional support or actual professional support. Just kind of evaluate who you will be able to lean on during this process. It might be family members, it might be friends, it might be a spouse, it might be a mentor or a coach or some kind of a business advisor. But just know who you have around you so you have a clear idea of who to go to during different obstacles that may arise. Here are three questions to ask yourself when it comes to evaluating your support system. Number one, do I have supportive friends and family who will believe in my vision? Number two, have I connected with mentors or joined groups, professional networks, entrepreneurial groups for guidance? Do I have a business or career coach I can lean on? Number three, are you prepared to rely on your network of people that you have built throughout your career? And that can be your connections on LinkedIn, the people in your peer group, advisors and friends who work as business owners already. Are you prepared to really lean on them for support and growth? Remember, surrounding yourself with a supportive community will give you that encouragement, that advice, and resources. Okay, this is how I did this. This is how I built my social media following. This is how I gained those partners that really helped boom my business. Now, if you don't have this supportive structure around you, please don't get discouraged. You can find supportive mentors and peers online. It doesn't have to be within your immediate circle. But if you take the time to join certain groups online, whether it's Facebook, LinkedIn, and elsewhere, You can start attending conferences or networking summits online, virtual events. That is a way to really make friends in the online space that are like-minded individuals that can help you and guide you and support you because they're going through this process as being a business owner as well. Next, I want you to assess your risk tolerance and your resilience. I believe that resilience is the number one characteristic an entrepreneur should have. Because you are going through those ups and downs as you build this business, as you grow it, as you scale it, and being resilient and being able to say, okay, that didn't work. Let's move on to the next thing. That resilience is going to carry you very, very far. Entrepreneurship, my friend, involves those risks and facing uncertainties and being able to say, okay, let's try it. Let's see if this works. And when it doesn't, getting back up and moving forward to try something else. So you want to evaluate right now your tolerance for uncertainty. Are you risk averse? Are you able to face these challenges and not let it wreck you? Again, turn inward. Really think about past situations that may have occurred and how you handled those. And then think about all of the stumbles you might have in launching this business. And think about how you would react. How comfortable are you with the unknown? You might not be able to change your mental or emotional strength when it comes to setbacks that may or may not happen, but knowing where you stand and knowing maybe some of your weaknesses in these areas can help you prepare and figure out how you can get that support and strengthen those areas that you might need a little work on. Here are three questions to ask yourself when it comes to risk tolerance and resilience. Number one, how do I handle stress and uncertainty? Number two, am I willing to take calculated risks to achieve my goal no matter what? Number three, do I have strategies for coping with any failures and setbacks that may arise? Building resilience and being prepared for these challenges is just another way for you to stay focused and motivated even through the tough times. Okay, one more area I want you to think about. This is deciding if you should go full time into this business venture or if you should start maybe with a side hustle first. So let's talk about whether or not you are ready. We've talked about finances, risk aversion, support system. Now we're really going to take all of that 
and think about what is best for you. Once you have those answers, you can look at these two different roads forward. Both approaches, full-time business owner and side hustle business owner, they both have their pros and cons, but it really is a choice that you have to make based on your personal situation. If you are dead set in leaving your job and starting full-time on this business venture, then the pros to that really are that you can dedicate full-time. You can really put all of your energy into this business and grow it without any other distractions, right? You'll have accelerated growth and you'll be able to be more focused and committed. You'll be able to focus 100% on all aspects of the business from day one. So that's a huge, huge pro. A con to going full-time might be that there's a higher financial risk. And that goes back to what we were assessing when we talked about finances. If you go in 100%, you might just feel that pressure on yourself to succeed quickly. Only you will know how you will react if your growth is not as fast as you were hoping. And I can tell you from my personal experience, building my first business took me about a year or so before I actually started paying myself. I had to focus on how I could grow in a way that was accelerated. And even though it did kind of take off rather fast, I still wasn't comfortable paying myself directly because I was taking any profits and putting them back into building the business. Now, in hindsight, I can look back and say, okay, I should have paid myself sooner. I should have been able to bring on employees sooner than I did. I should have depended on others um, to help me grow the business rather than doing 100% of it myself. And those are things that you'll learn too as you progress. You'll always have those things that you uh, wish you had changed. But either way, it's nice to look at the full picture and all of the different possibilities of what can happen. If you choose to start a side hustle, the pros are that you are testing your business. You are earning your paycheck at your nine to five while you're slowly growing your side hustle into full time. So it's a little less risky. You have a little bit less pressure on yourself and you can learn and grow gradually. If you've already been doing that in your current situation, more props to you because that's just a way of really seeing how you feel about the business too and what the market reception is, right? You're getting feedback from customers and clients and partners and you're learning how you can grow the business in a sustainable way. When it comes to cons of starting a side hustle, It's that balance, balancing between two different things. If you're working a full-time job and you're also trying to run this side hustle, where is your free time? And if you throw in being a parent as well or caring for family members, that's a lot to juggle. So your growth to full-time might take a little bit longer. It really depends on what you're looking for. I have definitely had clients that want to do the slow growth route. They want to keep their steady paycheck, slowly dip their toe into the business, and they're not in a rush to make it full-time. If that is you, then starting as a side hustle is a really safe, great way to go because you are taking that time and you're learning those time management skills that will really pay off once you're full-time. My advice to you is to evaluate your current situation and decide which approach really works best for your goals your financial stability, and your risk tolerance. You're learning about yourself as you're doing this self-assessment so you can actually say, yep, I'm ready to go 100% full-time, or maybe I'm gonna start this off slow as a side hustle, but you're gonna know a little bit more and feel a little bit more confident after asking yourself these questions, and hopefully that confidence will grow a little bit bigger and you'll be able to make a decision that is really perfect for you. Okay, as we wrap up this episode, remember assessing your readiness to pivot from a nine to five to becoming your own boss is very crucial. So do not skip the step. By evaluating all of these things we talked about today, you can make an informed decision that sets you up for success. And these are areas that a coach or a mentor or a friend or family member can't really make for you. You have to be honest with yourself while you're asking yourself these questions because you know yourself and your vision best. All right, that is it for how to quit your job and start a business. Next episode, we are going to discuss how you can craft a solid exit strategy from your current job 
including how to set timelines and manage those relationships. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the podcast and share it with a friend. If you know other women who might benefit from this advice, I urge you to share it with them. Until next time, keep dreaming big and take those bold steps towards your future goal. Do you ever feel like you need a little support as you plan your next career move? Then I invite you to join the Career Clarity Collective. It's a monthly membership, and inside, you will receive access to a community of like-minded women. You will also take part in group coaching calls, plus you'll get access to masterclasses and resources with new ones added every month. Join us for the tools you need, the guidance you deserve, and accountability to take action so that you can make your second act a success. Head over to secondactsuccess.co forward slash membership to enroll. I can't wait to see you inside the Career Clarity Collective.